see, here we go, Super Henry's absolutely beautiful day out in Adelaide, South Australia today. We had some pro riders, Brendan Davies here, former cross country mountain biker, FTP 410 what 71 kilos, that is the rumor I've been hearing on the street. Pretty fast riders, most of these guys go sub 13, which is about 5.5, 5.6 watts per kilo, depending on your weight. Norton Summit, five kilometer climb, 5.4, eight kilometer climb, 5.6% average, I believe. Pretty fast climb. Basically, you can get a good time by drafting. Not gonna lie, I got a good time today, I drafted. Um, going solo, it's pretty hard. So I wouldn't say like Norton Summit is the best climb to compare, but everyone does. So everyone's a good Norton Summit time. So here's my tips on how to get a good Norton Summit time. P t tip number one, Pick a group that's gonna ride your pace. I wanna do sub 12, so I pick Super Henry's because they do sub 12. If you wanna go maybe slightly slower, pick Super Elliot's. They normally go about 13 to 14. So you know, pick, pick your group. Step number two, <laughs> make sure that you actually get in a good position from the off. I'm fifth wheel going into this corner, pretty perfect because I can respond to attacks, I'm not gonna be on the front, so it's good. So you can see what's go up a bit a little bit, we're still dra drafting down here, 2%. Someone comes up on the right-hand side in a moment, knocks me out of the way and says, cheers mate, can I have the wheel? Now, nobody knew me on this ride. I look like a bit of a chopper if you had never ridden with me before, because I have my seat post way too low, because that's the way I like it. I pedal like an absolute idiot. I suffer and like throw my head around. I don't look super lean compared to all these guys, compared to my power, but, so most people I think would thought I was going to get dropped pretty early on, but I don't get dropped because I don't do that bollocks. That's what wankers do. Well, that's not, that's not, that's, that's a bit rude. That's what, you know, soft guns do. So anyway, I didn't, wasn't planning on getting dropped on this ride. You can see a bit of surges early on up to 500 as we do. And you have to remember Norton Summit that the beginning of the climb is the hardest by far because it gets steep as well. Got up to 7%. That's a decent, decent gradient where drafting does help. Obviously, we're still going 29 Ks an hour per 7% gradient, which is pretty fucking fast. Uh, for the average cunt, uh, but for me, uh, I could hold on, and I basically knew that as long as I got to the first hairpin, well, maybe about 10 minutes in, uh, if I was in, in touching distance, well, if I was in the group with 10 minutes to go, I know I could, I could finish with them, I knew they'd probably be sub-13. So here you can see the wattage is super spiky, just the beginning, we're sort of going up to 400, and then we're going back down to 200, average about 336 for the ride, which is about 5.6 5 watts per kilo for me. Uh, actually, 5.6 watts per kilo exactly for me, uh, which is my personal best. I average 340 watts for 10 minutes, uh, which is a solid effort. So you can see Brendan Davis, about four wheels in front of me. He's a solid bloke. We've got some guys leading it out. Everyone pretty much here it goes for an absolute smash fest up Norton's uh, and basket range afterwards. I just do Norton's because I've got some efforts to do afterwards, and then I pay a story for a PB, which is pretty beautiful. You'll probably have a vid on that. Link it below. Um, and anyway, yeah, so that was a pretty solid effort uh, afterwards. But anyway, this is good. So this guy on the right-hand side is coming up the road. Everyone can see the pace is going down a little bit. We're still going 24 k's an hour for 6% gradient. So, you know, it's not too bad. But anyway, Brendan Davis has a little look back, and he's like, right, guys, you're going to just so cheerio. I'm going to launch it. He averaged about 450 watts. And uh, he basically launched it pretty soon around this corner. And the guy, no one could respond. Pretty shit, to be honest. I was just back here. Blue guy tries to respond. Everyone on the right-hand side of the road goes across, these guys are like, all right, and just try and hop on the back. Pace has suddenly got up to 30 k's an hour, which is always a bit tough on a 5% gradient. Sorry about the background noise. Getting up to 4.30 here, holding the wheel as hard, much as we can. I know I was gonna get across this gap, not too not too difficult. Find it was, I can know I can hold for a, a, probably a minute and then set back into a high tempo, so I was pretty confident that I could close this gap. Cadence is pretty good here, because the watts are up, we're up to 100, 100 RPM, which is pretty high for me. I, I averaged not great cadence on this climb, I think it was probably about 88, high 80s. I generally find like on the on five percent climbs, I tend to have a worse cadence than when it's super steep or it's completely flat. But maybe that's just me. Anyway, heart rate's up to one ninety, so we're pretty chilled out. Sorry about the sun on the left hand side. Pretty bright day. You can see this guy ahead of me is like rolling around the road, weaving around. He wants me to close the gap. I'm like, mate, I don't close no gaps, mate. You you if you open the gap, you close in the gap, boy. But the, this guy was having none of it, and he was like, all right, I'm just gonna wait a bit. Hopefully, you'll close the gap. And I'm like, well, maybe, but maybe, but. But my friend, I don't really want to close the gap. And anyway, he ends up leaving a huge gap. I'm like, all right, we're going to have to go around him. You can see the watts coming down about 340, 312. Anything below about 300 is pretty easy for me, like below, below threshold. So as soon as it gets to below 300, I was sort of checking and being like, oh, this isn't too bad. You see cadence is really dropping now. I'm down to 74 cadence at 21 k's now. I think it stayed in the big ring the whole the whole climb, to be honest, mate. Like, um, it, yeah, it was pretty crazy. Anyway, this guy's finally like chucked the elbow out. And I'm like, all right, across we go. Up to 400 almost, yeah, almost 400. And then um, hopped across here, and uh, now fourth guy on the climb, blue guy's just blown up ahead of us, and Brendan Davies for Ben Long Swiss Wellness. 
it's just up the road. Um, and me and this guy had, we were talking afterwards, we are like, we both thought we probably could have got across to um, Brandon Davies because he wasn't too far up the road. But we both thought if we did that, we would completely blow up. So we basically tried to just like swap turns. But this guy didn't really, well, to be fair, actually, I can't really badmouth this guy. This guy fucking dragged me up the climb. He was an absolute solid hitter. Um, and I was just crying on the back, being like, this hurts so much. Um, I was in a lot of pain. He keeps looking back, making sure there's no cars going to try and overtake us when we go past these riders because we know we're going to sort of double their speed almost at some point. And I was behind and maybe I should have like pulled a turn, but it wasn't like it was bunching up behind. Like We were pretty strung out, to be honest. Like You can see now it's below threshold, like two, a little below 300 watts. This guy has a really nice pedaling technique. Like Have a look at the... Like, he's just 105 cadence, just banging it out. Really smooth power stroke. My cadence is absolutely shocking, like 78. I, I actually need to do some cadence work because it's just got dreadful recently. It's just because so many of the climbs are really steep around here. I just don't do cassette, so I'm just not used to like grinding at like 240. So when I go bring it up to 300 watts, I'm still grinding. So anyway, I need to improve my cadence. Around this corner, this is where it's good to be high up because people always surge it out the corners. You can see I tried to stay in the saddle as much as I could. Gets up to 500 watts here, and I knew that if you're like last wheel, you're going to get up to like 700, 800 watts to try and spike on the back because you naturally slow into the corner and just accelerate out because the gradient slightly slackens here and this is always the fastest bit out of 26 k's now overtaking everyone brendan davis is now start the road and we got one guy just ahead of us who we're about to catch now which is a good still looking around i thought we looking back at it it looks like he's sort of trying to get me to pull a turn but at, the, at that present moment he really wasn't he was just trying to um he was just trying to see if there's any cars and the good thing about this ride is no one cares if you sit on like it's just a smash to the top like if you do well and hang on like fair play to you it's not like a race where people are like oh why are you sitting on you should do some work everyone's just like i just want to go as hard as i physically can so it's really good training really love it i do some efforts afterwards because just because i find like i need to do structured training but i found these these things really help my training just really seeing how far hard i can push myself because otherwise there's no way i'd know that i could do 340 watts for 10 minutes like i don't think I would think that is possible, um, really. Or even just with the surges. Like I think, obviously, I was doing 10 minutes flat out, no surges, or a bit a little bit higher. But anyway, it was good, good running with these guys. You see the water just slightly low now because we've got two people I'm drafting off, which really helps. You can just see, though, like, how, how are you going to get, like, sub-13 solo unless you are an absolute hitter and you're hitting, like, probably for me, I'd have to do 350, 360 on the front the whole way. So you can really see, again, around the corner, look at the power. It suddenly goes up to 450, 460. I'd say that's the biggest thing that's different in climbing with a group. So going back to what I was saying earlier about getting good Nords time, get used to climbing in a group. It's very different to climbing solo. When you're climbing solo, it's really, like, easy just to hold the power really smooth. Like, when I was pacing tour, I literally just held, like, 280 watts the whole way up. And you could see until the end, like, I was super smooth. I was really happy about that. Um, but when you're riding with a group, like, you can look at my cadence. I don't know what the fuck is going on here. It's, like, 70 cadence. This is a bit embarrassing, to be honest. I need to up my cadence. Uh, so this guy now pulls off the front, and the giant man goes back to the front. He's like, all right, mate, let's drag all you guys up to the front. I'm like, cheers, man. This is a beaut turn. Uh, anyway, the cadence gets up to 80, but, yeah, you can see the cadence is pretty low here. Like, I definitely could go a lot better, um, maybe if I imp increase my cadence. But anyway, we didn't. Uh, so, yeah, so just learn to ride in a group, learn to deal with the surges, because even though you might be like, oh, it'd be better just to hold an even wattage, like, on an 8% climb, 9% climb, 10% climb, maybe. But even then, if it's short, probably not. Like anything over 15 k's an hour, I'd say just to try and hold the wheel as much as possible because then the draft definitely does make a difference. Uh, so you can see how now the wattage has gone down a little bit. We're only going 23 k's an hour and like I'm only doing like less than 300 watts. Um, so you can see that it's really is surging and then we're up to 420 watts because often around these like people, he'd sort of slow down to look behind him and then surge out. And obviously these surges are just multiplied and magnified down the group. So if you're like really far back it's it's often really hard just to keep going unless you see it and then you you just keep your power constant sort of overlap the guy's wheel ahead of you and then just j slot back into the pace and if it's not too competitive for places everyone should should let you do that again like if you're riding and you're overtaking people it can be good to call out just to let them know but is also if you're being overtaken just like try and be predictable and like not swerve across the road like obviously i i get overtaken and i just try and like um, stay to the left hand side of the road if you're riding on the left and not like swerve across the road randomly um, just because it can be a little bit dangerous if people are going quite fast uh, but anyway we're, about we're over halfway through the effort and I was like not feeling too bad I was like this, this is sustainable I just really hope this guy didn't flick his elbow because I was like I really don't think I can pull a turn and like, I don't want to slow it down so I probably would end up pulling a turn but just for like probably a minute or something just to keep the pace going and then like um, and then sit back because these guys who pull turns and then sit on the bunch like that's pretty solid effort like I'm not gonna lie like, I don't think I could do that really 
Um, which is why I, I just hate the Norton's time because like, you're probably gonna call me this, like a sandbag, but that's pretty much what I did. I just literally sat on the wheels. I mean, so did everyone else to be fair. Like this guy was so strong, like just so strong. Like there's some real big hitters in, from A grade behind me who are like fast, like seriously fast. And they all just like uh, sat on because this guy is just absolutely blasting. It's only to, when the, like, it sort of gets towards the end that people start to like, right, let's go around. Again, this corner, you'll see the wattage goes 250 and then up to sort of close to 400 watts now out the corner. And this is really when it starts to flatten off after 24 Ks an hour, 27, 28, 29, 30, even maybe and up to 28. And this is when you click up the gear and you, this is when you get the real good draft. When it gets really over 25, you can feel the draft a lot um, and it's good. It's good. I really like this. And we're up to 430 here. And I think just soon uh, you'll see people uh, come around to try and take over the mantle, which is pretty solid. I just really couldn't pull a turn. I, I just... In retrospect, maybe I could, but in that moment, I really just didn't want to. And my objective for today was not trying to like hold my best power or get any training. In. But my my best was pretty selfish to be honest, but it was just trying to get a PR because um, I just wanted sub thirteen. And I got sub thirteen, so I'm pretty happy about that. Um, but yeah, I think anyone like for Norton's just like find a group to pace with or just just like contact people be like who are slightly faster than you. But I want to get at this speed like. Can you pace me? So these guys from Butterfield Racing, who are the local racing lads, they're good. There's old Blue Man who did pretty well. The guy ahead of me just managed to slot in, and this raffle rider, I'm really annoyed I didn't slot in just in front of him, because you'll see what happens in a minute. Anyway, I go straight to the back, and this is where I'm like, right, you're at the back, it's so easy um, to drop the wheel. And also, I had to do that surge up to 400, but there I was like, right, let's hold the wheel. I was very good at holding the wheel, I was super close, which I was happy about, because I've improved a lot, because sometimes I got a bit scared before. But anyway, this guy at the back is really strong as well. You can see he's got a beautiful cadence as well. Everyone here has a really beautiful cadence apart from me, because I was grinding quite a lot. You can see even here, it's only 83, 84 cadence. So definitely I need to improve that. And I'll probably do some high cape and stuff tomorrow on my, on my recovery rise just to try and get me up to like 100. I used to be. This guy pulls the wheel just as like, ah, cheerio. He's like, sorry, mate. And the other guy in front of me, can you see how quick he closed that gap? He's super fresh. Well, me, I like didn't really know what was happening and couldn't surge up to like five, six hundred watts to close it straight away. And we're now at 29 Ks now. And I'm like, come on, mate. All the way, all the way. We've, we've gone this far. You know you can get it up. So we're now up to 350. And then as, as soon as I did that 450 surge, I could sort of like, you suddenly slingshot onto the wheel. And as soon as you get close to the wheel, the drag decreases. So if you hold the same power, you suddenly just go flying into the wheel. And we're now on the wheel. And this is where it, really where it starts to speed up. And once you made it to hit here, in a group, you've made it all the way in reality, or you might lose a couple of seconds just because the draft gets so easy at the beginning. So this is where you don't want to be too complacent and be like, I made it. But you can see here, like, like look at that, down to 160 at some points, up to three, up to 400. Like, that's just because we're going around a rider, I guess. But even so, you can see the wattage really starts to go down below 300 watts. So here, if you're pacing someone, this is where really you can increase the power. So uh, if you want to get a good time, basically tell the person to like really negatively split it for them. So the beginning part go easy because it's steep and then at the end they can fucking drill it. Um, and also if you're getting someone to pace them, just get them to sit in a not very aerodynamic position. So then you get way more of a draft. That's another top tip for me. And now the speed's come up. My cadence has got up to 95, 96. So that I'm feeling more confident here. D up to 3% gradient, down to 3% gradient, sorry. And we made it towards the end of Norton's. I'm like, I don't really have the legs to sprint this guy ahead of me. I'm in probably a probably one or two wheels back in order to sprint. I should probably should have started sprinting here if I wanted to do, but the pace is like high, it's weird, because you're like sitting in, you're like, nah, it's pretty chill, because you expect to be a client, so you're like, the pace of sitting in should be more or less the same pace as you're going, but you forget it's actually a flow flat, up to 34 k's an hour. Um, so in reality, um, when I was got out the draft, I was like, this is actually quite hard. They're probably doing five, 600 watts on the front. So I don't think like, really I have much to spare. So I was just on the back and I was like, I'll just roll in with these guys. This guy on the left tries to attack, but never attack on the inside because there's normally riders there, I guess. And so it's always safer to attack on the other side, I guess, um, of the road up to 500 watts. And there we go. We're coming towards the end of the segment. Cheers for watching. Hope I had some good tips. Just hold the wheel cunt is basically what I say. Um, make sure you pick a bunch which is suitable for your, uh, like, pace don't pick a bunch that's going to do 12 minutes if your pr is 20 because you're just going to get popped and you don't get a good time but also don't pick a bunch that's too slow for you because you're just going to drag them up a hill so yeah there we go um i'm probably gonna i've got a race next weekend so i won't be doing it but i'll be doing some, maybe some e-bike pacing on thursday I'm trying to get 12 30 is it um is it legal is it strava legal i don't know leave it you'll leave your comments in but down below Got a 1257, I think I'm 62 out of 17,000 up Norton, so I'm pretty content with that. But as I said again, Norton Summit is the dumb climb to compare. If you want to compare, do Kensington Road, do Cherryville, do something actually steep. Don't do, um, what's it called, Norton Summit, as it is um, 
it's pretty much an irrelevant climb in terms of drafting, just because people, you can just draft up the climb and not end up too, doing too much work. I was had a bit of talk to the giant man, Brendan Davies came along, he was a, he was a really nice set of guy actually, pretty down to earth, he was talking to my friend Louis as well. So it was a chilled out day, so I got to the top of Norton Summit, went to the drinks fountain, um, there you can see old ben, Brendan Davies, had a bit of chat with him, good bloke. Next time I'm going to try and go with his attack and hold his wheel as long as possible, he did 6.3 watts per kilo for the, the 12 minute effort, I think I'd have to hold about 350, 360 to, on his wheel, just because I'm slightly lighter than him obviously, that would be 6 watts per kilo for, for like 12 minutes, which I probably can't do, but anyway, we will see. Um, so yeah, well, as I say, solid ride. As so I got to the top of the water fountain, descended and then paced towards her PR, which is pretty beautiful. It was the seventh overall, so a few, few day out for us, for the vegans. Uh, got a got to twelve fifty seven. I think there's only three Tim Rowe, um, Tim Rowe, maybe this other guy. I can't remember your name. And Jeremy Cameron. I'm the same time as Harley now, which is good, and I think I can go faster. So that yeah, there you go. Cheers for watching. See you in the next video, and um. Bye. There he is. Charlie Carbs and Cycling.